Okay, I'm calling this meeting to order of the Economic Development Committee, City of Greenfield at 6.01 p.m. I'm going to read the chair's statement. This meeting is being recorded by the Economic Development Committee. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. Uh, there's a bunch of boilerplate about uh, disrupting the meeting, and I can kick you out and order the constable to do the same, but we're going to skip that because I trust you all. Uh, let's do the roll call. <clears throat> um, I'm Councillor Elmer. I'm here. Councillor Bullock is here. Councillor Disorger, you want to say? Here. I'm here. Councillor Healy, I don't think I'm he's here. here. Councillor Mayo. Here. Okay, good. We have a quorum. And this, the mayor is also present. MJ Adams is present. Uh, anybody else want to announce themselves? Uh, okay, here's another guest. Uh, 413 dot 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 636. Uh, are you Councillor Healy by any chance? We'll, uh, he'll make himself known if it's him. Okay, uh, moving on. Um, uh, the approval of minutes. We have uh, two sets, July 12th and September 13th. I have a small correction on September 13th. Anybody else uh, see any things that need to be corrected? All right, I'll mention mine. Uh, where did I put that here? Uh, in, the, um, in the description of the report by Doug Stoltz, Thoughts in regard to the overcapacity in marijuana market in Massachusetts. Um, I think uh, Tammy got the the rate and the and the, the uh, first derivative confused. Uh, she had that uh, that marijuana use among adults was uh, declining. What it was was the growth was declining. It's maybe better described as the a leveling off of marijuana sales in the state. Any other changes? Hearing none, can I have a motion to accept one or both of these I'll make, minutes? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second, disorder. Okay, uh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Any abstentions? Was that Councillor Healy I heard there? Yes, I am here, sorry. I was okay. Let the record show that Councilor Healy has arrived. Thank you. All right, moving on. Um, now, for, for those who weren't there uh, last week, we uh, had a spirited discussion with the planning board about the first motion here, a zoning amendment to rezone 21 Oak Street Road uh, from general industry to rural residential. Uh, we gave it, we voted on it and gave it a positive, uh, unanimous positive recommendation among those who are here, who were there rather. Uh, do you want to, <laughs> for Councillor Bullock and Councillor Healy, you want to run down what this is about? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, this is a, a, a woman who inherited a, a a, a rare wood business, I guess that's one way to describe it, uh, from her father and, uh, and a piece of property that uh, includes her house uh, and uh, extends all the way to the business. Uh, her father wanted it zoned uh, general industrial. No, what, uh, he wanted... Uh, I think I remember this one, Councillor Elmer. This was uh, the one where she wants to make it uh, build a subdevelopment of homes, correct? Right, right. And there were some, yeah, the public, yeah, uh, some people from the public showed up and were concerned that maybe there was a secret plot to, to grow marijuana on this property. Uh, and she, she showed up and said the last thing she wanted to do was grow marijuana. She has a plan to make, uh, to, to build some housing for over 55 year olds. And it just sounded great to us. We could use the housing. So that passed unanimously. And uh, we, we, 
unless there's some objection, we will forward the positive recommendation we voted on last week. Moving on. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to the marijuana uh, uh, exhibit A, the counselor disorder uh, proposed, which we discussed. Um, Jenny, is there anything you want to change? Uh, I, I have some suggestions that would accommodate some of the objections that the planning board had, but uh, I wanted to hear from you first. Well, I actually think that the planning board, my take on that meeting was by the time we finished that the planning board actually agreed with the changes, but um, can I read through my initial statement that I read for the benefit of the other two who won't be able to hear that meeting? Uh, sure. Okay. Um, the real reason for this zoning change was um, I was on planning when we crafted the initial, initial zoning. As the businesses took off, so did our knowledge of how to plan for it. I remember when we were getting letters from churches to increase the distance between the church church and the marijuana retailer. Those letters were being written in every town it, that was allowing licenses. I remember Eric Torog and George and Linda and myself all looking to see how far the, re, the marijuana retailer was from the GCC downtown campus and how far it was from every church on Main Street. We had great angst about whether it should be 250 or 500 feet and received a lot of input. Councilor Ricketts and I went on a security tour of Patriot Care with our police department and chief of police. I remember police details outside of our first retailer for weeks after it opened. This of course was in addition to their security staff, which they had they had while it was open. I don't know of another municipality that has had to revisit their retail establishments and zoning. The Cannabis Commission has rewritten parts of the delivery and cultivation process and has added pilot licensing programs for social consumption cafes. Many municipalities have added and amended parts of their cannabis zoning regulations, most often due to out door grow. For this recent amendment, I reviewed 51 of them. The language in ours is almost identical to, to Lester's. Many municipalities do not have any marijuana establishments. We allow registered marijuana dispensaries, cultivation, indoor, outdoor, cooperatives, retailers, independent testing labs, marijuana um, research facility, product manufacturer, courier, and delivery operator. Each one of these has different fees and regular regulations for, can for the Cannabis Commission. For instance, the application fee for an indoor grow tier three is $600, and for an outdoor grow, it would be uh, $300. An annual license um, is also required. For an indoor license to cultivate is 30,000 for tier eight. And for a tier eight outdoor, it's 500, it, it's 15,000. Um, for, out, for outdoor grow overhead, the cultivation is less and the product sells for less than half of the value of can, cannabis that's grown in an environmentally controlled indoor grow. Conversely, the tax gain for the town on a building which has been built or renovated to meet the code and security requirements of the building code and with the Cannabis Commission is astronomical compared to outdoor grow. I agreed with Eric about not um, writing out line by line the security met um, requirements. However, I would like to point out that the Cannabis Commission guidelines um, are, are different for indoor and outdoor grow. Outdoor grow requires a perimeter security fence and a commercial grade 
non-residential locks. These are not needed for indoor grow as the buildings with four rolls walls are far more secure. Um, but they do have regulations devoted to their security. We permitted indoor grow in the general commercial, planned industrial and general industrial. Here on Chapman and Wells and many other parts of the general commercial and general industrial areas, the housing is extremely close to each other and to any other permitted business. Um, I can say for certain, writing the law, that I intended that an indoor grow facility was inside the confines of a building that is defined similar, that, and that's why this definition is here. That's all, I just wanted to explain why we did this because there wasn't a clear definition of what indoor and outdoor grow was. And Thank I you. think you all have the zoning regulation. Go ahead, Bill. Okay, there, there were a few issues that have come up uh, and, and, uh, and, I, and I think we should just decide uh, what we want okay. for the town. Uh, one of them is, uh, do we allow greenhouses? Um, we, that could be, we could change a, a few little few little places in your, uh, in your document that would allow that, but I don't know how people feel. Um, we had testimony that uh, from the guy in Bernardson that he, that he thought that a filter system, a carbon filter system could uh, handle the, the odor in a greenhouse. Um, we had uh, a letter from a resident saying she thought they were less, uh, they weren't as good as uh, what you've described here at actual building. Um, Can I ask uh, a question? Yes, go ahead, Councilor Bullock. Um, this actually recently came up with myself and my neighbors. So there's a new, newish greenhouse um, down on five and ten in in Deerfield, and um, we're at the time in the season where they're using um, additional lighting for the for the correct amount of lighting that the plants need during the day, or and during the night, and so. Um, there's actually a significant amount of light pollution that I see at my house on Hope Street um, from this new greenhouse um, that's been installed. And my neighbors and I were talking about it a couple weeks ago because there's a red glow now um, <laughs> that you see. And a couple nights ago, I saw it through my window and I said, oh, why is it glowing red outside? There's no moon. It was when there was, you know, there it was there was barely a moon in the sky. Um, and I went outside and I, I saw the glow from the greenhouse. So I just I just wondered about like all I understand is concerning people, but I also have questions about the light pollution um, in general and how how that's going to affect lots of things, including like our neighbors and our, our quality of life in the in the evening, but also migrating animals and other things like that. Uh, just to clarify, that's a marijuana uh, grow. Yeah. And where where is it? It's on five and ten. Um, it's you know not too far down on the right hand side. If you're heading south, uh, it's. Uh, is, it, is it after uh, the Deerfield Academy? Um, I. Th think it's after the deer it's like the big stucco house that used to have a greenhouse next to it and they built a few more greenhouses i can let okay. me look on a map and show you i'm i'm bad at like where on five and ten but it's on the right when you're heading south okay well that would be a reason to not allow go ahead jenny i wonder if that's in the rc so i personally think that um i don't think that hoop houses count as an indoor facility. That is my. I think personal we all theory. agree on that. Yep. So I think that should be that in the planned industrial, GI and general commercial, it should be inside, but out uh, inside a building, as defined. If it's in the RC, they're going to either do outdoor grow or they could have hoop houses. But the actual marijuana cultivation. Um, 
if it's a licensed uh, cultivator, the uh, lighting is only permitted in indoor grow. So I'm surprised at that, Marianne. Well, it sounds like it is an indoor grow. Uh, yeah. Right? It's in a greenhouse. It's like a large greenhouse. They erected a couple more greenhouses um, after the purchase of the right. building. Well, we, we have a choice. Uh, we can uh, say that, as Ginny has here, that it has to be you know, framed and it has to have plywood or its equivalent or we can allow greenhouses. Um, I don't have a strong feeling either way. I think we do have language about uh, light pollution. Uh, right? And actually I had a question about that. Light, it, it's back here on 17. Lighting from any indoor or outdoor marijuana cultivation shall not extend beyond property lines. Artificial lighting from within gate buildings, I'm not sure what that is, shall not create light pollution. What's a gate building, Ginny? I, I don't actually know what a gate building is. Well, maybe it might be a guardhouse. Like a guardhouse? Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. it, can yeah, you just make it fencing. artificial lighting? How about just out, artificial lighting shall not create light pollution and get rid of the gate yes. buildings? Yes, no. I have a sentence <laughs> later on about the lighting. Yes, and, and I know um, I can make from my experience to go in front of planning boards um, that they're going to require an engineered plan showing the foot candle ratings on mm -hmm. the property and at the property Correct. lines. So, you know, that, that would really be handled through planning when they do the review, right? If they see there's light pollution, they're just going to deny it. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I just had a quibble about gate buildings because it wasn't clear what that meant. Anyway, what's the, what's the sense of the committee? Yes on on greenhouses or no on greenhouses? Or indoor or outdoor? Yeah. In? Oh, I'm talking about when we define an indoor grow, do we want to exclude greenhouses? We've already ex agreed to exclude hoop houses. But a glass greenhouse that's that's fully enclosed and has a, a carbon filtration system and artificial light, it would have to have artificial light to be an indoor grow. Um, do we want to exclude those? I'm like I say, I don't really care. Much. My personal feeling is it was, it was my great. personal feeling is no. No greenhouse. My mine as well, because because of the lighting issue. Is it won't yeah. the greenhouse won't prevent the, the lighting issue from from being uh, there? Got it. Okay, good. So we'll leave it as you have it, Jenny. Um, the the other question was: uh, Is five hundred feet too much? Uh, and uh, have you had a chance, Jenny, to look at the map that or the the graphic that? Um, Eric created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it showed that uh, to to put tier one facilities in the country code country club road area, uh, you couldn't. They couldn't be five hundred feet. Uh, they could be within ten percent of five hundred feet in most cases. Uh, Four hundred feet would would allow them. Uh, how, how does the group feel? Do we want to? Let me just explain. There's some wiggle room uh, in in uh, the distance from nearby houses. And is it ten percent, Ginny? I think you're allowed twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yeah. Uh, so we could leave it at five. In in uh, the standard that we have in the zoning book is allowed by special permit. Right, and uh, we're in the special as I permit recall, land. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, so the, the, I think that uh, the planning board accepted 500 feet with the understanding that that 20% wiggle room would allow uh, tier one grows on in the country club road area. 
Uh, and I, I'm okay with that. Uh, what's the sense of the room? We want to keep it at 500 feet. Anybody? I see Councilor Mayo shaking his head. Yep. Councilor Healy. My my opinion is if we if we allow them to go less than 500 feet for a restriction, they should have to plant a significant amount of landscape buffer along the roadway. That's my. In opinion. addition to having a 500 foot. Um, yeah. So, so back. if you can't get the 500 and you're within the 20 percent, we'll still allow it, but you have to provide a, a significant landscape buffer between the street and the site, and that would be uh, well-developed trees and shrubs that are natural to this area, right? Um, and that would just give you a, one. It would give you a, um, would block the view, right? And two, um, it might help mitigate any noise or sound, right? So that, this would be, uh, here, here's a, uh, a little tricky uh, procedural problem. Uh, when Ginny introduced this, uh, it started a clock ticking. And um, mm -hmm. we had our public hearing on this language. If we make it any more restrictive than it is now, uh, we have to start the process again. Have I got that right, Ginny? We, That's correct. The clock would restart and the um public hearing would have to be rescheduled so i think actually at, i mean i like the idea of adding um you know um some rule about you have to grow some vegetation between the road and your your um your outfit i do think that's that would be increasing that would increase the um the restriction and, and would run us afoul of that clock and so forth um mayor you have your hand raised I can't hear you though. Muted. Um, thank you, Phil, for recognizing me. That's not a substantive change. Oh. Uh, to, to require that. I mean, the planning board would likely do that anyway. But if you put it in, I don't. I don't really believe. I mean, Jenny can um, nod yes or no. But I don't think that type of thing is a substantive change because it's. Um, it's. It's well within their purview to ask for that anyway and so if you put that in it's fine a substantive change would be more like reducing it from 500 to 300 or 250 or something so the 20 percent give or take is a good uh, measurement and then requiring um, some form of buffering it's probably somewhere already in that bylaw that our ordinance, but either way, that's not a substantive change. Okay. It's kind of, it's kind of um, what is the word? You know a substantive change when you see it. <laughs> oh, it's like pornography. Okay. Yeah, or something oh. like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let it, um, let it be known that the planning board does not engage in pornography. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Councilor Healy, you want to write a sentence that we would drop in and send it to me? Sure. Sure. I'll get some language okay. put together. Okay, good. Yeah, that's uh, tomorrow. And then, um, uh, th and relevant to that, on number 15, I had a question. No outdoor marijuana cultivation establishment should allow cultivation, processing, manufacture, sale, or display of marijuana or marijuana products to be visible from a public place without the use of binoculars, aircraft, or other optical aids. Um, I think I know where, where you're going with that, uh, Councilor Disorder, but I, I know that um, the planning board raised a couple of times the, the idea that putting um, uh, an impermeable or a, a, a fence or some kind of a green thing that you couldn't see through between the marijuana and the public places would make it um, stick out more than, wait, is this for outdoor ground? Yeah, this is outdoor. Uh, that it might be better just to have a fence and and you see the plants, but it's you know it's they're plants. Uh, uh, again, I'm not I don't have strong feelings, but I just want to raise it because Chuck raised it a couple of times. Um, Bill, 
Yeah, um, go ahead. I think, Thank you. I think I agreed with everyone that we'd go from 16 on um, uh, because the, the CCC, the Cannabis Commission, actually has language in there, um, ray visibility. So if we just started with 16 and eliminated all the security and well, number 15, and went okay. along from 16 and 17 and F, I'm happy. And I, I felt like I, I, I listened and heard that. And um, there's so already okay. language from the Cannabis Commission, so fine. You're okay with deleting number 15? 15. 15. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. Um, then they did have some quibbles with uh, under F, under 17 F, and then there's H, I, J, K. Uh, you know, the proximity to other licensed marijuana uses to prevent clustering. I think they were suggesting that we delete to prevent clustering, because clustering is sort of ill-defined. Um, okay. And then, uh, and then relationship to surrounding uses to avoid unnecessary exposure to minors. I think would would uh, they should consider proximity to schools? Would that be a better way to write to say it? Um, it... Go ahead, Jenny. Um, proximity to other licensed marijuana. You know what? You could just have uh, proximity to other licensed marijuana uses. Period. They could, yes, yeah. they could review that. Site design mm -hmm. and other development re related site impacts. And I'm okay well, with I'm, that. I'm suggesting, I'm suggesting for I, replace it with proximity to schools. That would be something that the that they would consider. Getting yeah, that what do, you're trying we, to get. We do the have language. language in there, but that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well I will make those suggestions. Very good. Uh, and I guess um, what do you know what our timing is? Do we or do we I have to vote on this be, now? So, so we can take a vote on it now so that we're done with it for this month. However, the planning board is going to give us their recommendations. I think it was very good to go over this. If the we were going to get firmed up language from the planning board, so I I would have preferred to take the vote after that, but just so that we I don't have to go over the whole discussion again. Let's look I at what they come up with. I like that. Okay. Yeah, we, they, we offered uh, Eric a chance to incorporate some of Mr. Norman's suggestions as long as they were major. Okay, all right, so we can just proceed and we'll take this up on the, I, I guess it could be taken up on the 17th. Uh, okay, let me get back to the agenda. Okay, uh, well, that uh, those are the two motions. Uh, I don't think we have to re-vote the Oak Hill thing because we a majority of us voted on that already. I hear no objections to it. Um, so we can move on to discussions. Uh, the I, I believe that the meeting on the 17th, the main purpose of it will be to discuss the French King Highway rezoning. Uh, the uh, we, I, I postponed that because um, our, our uh, star witness uh, couldn't make it, uh, had a family emergency. So we're going to all reconvene uh, on the 17th and deal with that. Uh, Mayor, are you here to talk about that or are you willing to wait till the 17th? I'm quite willing to wait till the 17th. I was interested in the uh, marijuana thing too. So, and, and I try to make as many of these meetings as I can, so. Okay, all right. Uh, so that, and then we're not gonna do the, uh, we're not gonna do the uh, parking stuff today. Uh, that's gonna take, we're gonna have to get some experts in. So I think we're, we're close to the end of our agenda. Uh, let me, uh, uh, if, uh, so let, let me just ask, is there any new business? <laughs> 
Is there any yeah. old business? Phil, when is when is this meeting rescheduled to? November 17th. It's a joint okay. pl planning board EDC meeting. It starts at six o'clock. It's listed as Zoom conferencing, which is fine with me. Uh, and uh, there will be, it's a public hearing and we'll hear people talk about the, the zoning change. Uh, and uh, Councilor Healy, did you, you were talking about making uh, a suggestion. You wanna talk about it now or do you wanna wait till the 17th? Um, I mean, we could just throw it out there so people have some time to think about it before the meeting. But, you know, I I was looking to maybe, instead of ch forming a new zoning area, you know, making modif modifications to planned industrial um, under the special permit section in, in the bylaws, just saying basically, you know, that um, commercial, you know, retail, Things like that under 30,000 square feet would be allowed by special permit. Um, and that would kind of allow us to keep the gate open for any other possible developments in the future that are interested in putting in some sort of you know, commercial or shopping. Because the, the, the problem is, you know, you talk to many residents in Greenfield and their biggest quarrel is there's nowhere, nowhere to shop, right? So they go to Hadley, they go to Keene, they go to, you know, New Hampshire. And we're taking business away from Greenfield by not having anywhere for these people to shop, right? Um, so, you know, I have the language in an email. I'll bring it to the next meeting with me, but that's kind of what I had in mind. If anybody has any thoughts or questions they want to talk about now, um, I'm more than open to hearing them. Um, otherwise, we could wait till the 17th. Um, it's interesting that, that uh, Mr. Norman also had a suggestion to allow uh, retail uh, below 20,000 square feet, I think he said. Yeah. Uh, so you're not far apart. Mayor, do you have any thought about that? I, uh, <clears throat> let me say, yes. Uh, well, <laughs> I actually had my hand raised on another thing. Oh, right. That thought escaped me for a minute. So I'll talk about this. Um, in my presentation, um, which I'm happy to, it's short, I'm happy to redo it on the 17th if you want me to, but I do offer that as an option. Um, just a set, it's called a different, it's called a slightly different kind of zone. It might be easier. There's a complication with that. You would have to, the planning board would have to withdraw their recommendation and we would start over again. So Councillor Healy, if I understood a little bit more clearly, um, so maybe he and I can talk, um, would have a, um, maybe it would be fine. And I have talked to Charles about this uh, a couple of different times and um, and express my interest in, in allowing that type of thing to happen as well uh, there, but it would require a little bit of tweaking of the, uh, I'm not sure the special permit area is where it would be done. That's why that's the piece that I'm not quite clear on yet. Uh, knowing what I know about what's allowed in PI and not allowed and clearly no retail. So it may mean that we wouldn't, we wouldn't lose a lot of time on this. There's no huge rush, but there is some urgency to it um, that, um, you know, if the planning board did withdraw and get rethink um, some parts of the PI or calling it a different zone, that would allow some retail. I've all, I've often, I've always advocated for that. Um, lim, what I call limited retail. So, 20, you know, ascribing a thirty thousand or a twenty thousand square feet, that's fine. You know, it, in my book, uh, really, uh, because mm -hmm. it, anything under that is would be also allowed. So, you know, it might be worth um, taking a little bit of time on that. We, we, but it would require restarting the clock. Well, it would, yeah, but that can be discussed and um, and the planning board can always withdraw its recommendation at any time. I mean, it's not gonna affect your uh, November 17th. I think you should continue to have that public hearing and, right. and hear what you have to hear. With regard to, no. a re, uh, you know, for those people that feel like a certain amount of retail, I mean, I do, Steve Capshaw, and others uh, make a good point 
you know, you you need and Albert would be one of them that, you know, <laughs> having a mix of um, uh, dollar per hour jobs is much more um, agreeable than to limit it to just retail, you know, um, certainly advanced manufacturing offers more opportunity and more income for people, but it does limit the ability for uh, if we just went straight PI, it does limit the ability for some retail out there. Councilor Mayo, give your if hand. I would make, make a suggestion that we uh, not have another nail shop open up. Uh, <laughs> that seems to be the demise of towns is is with the increase of nail shops. They, you see the shops around uh, uh, new shop, new nail shops close uh, with the increase of nail shops. So uh, just as a, uh, an observation, uh, you, the, the more nail shops you see, the less businesses around it seem to propagate. Uh, yeah. So it's just an observation. I, I hear you. I remember in Brooklyn, they used to call them rent payers. Uh, when a landlord lo lost the business that was there, they'd put a, a nail shop in just to get some rent coming in with no idea that it would be permanent. I, I will say, just channeling Mr. Norman for a second, uh, if if uh, a retailer who wanted to put a twenty or 30,000 square foot uh, operation in the planned industrial zone, why why wouldn't they put it downtown? Um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and the other the other thing is, Mayor, I, when, I heard you pretty loud and clear when you made your pitch, original pitch to the planning board, mm -hmm. that that there was a need for planned industrial. There was Absolutely. a there was a uh, there are people who want to move into planned industrial, and that calling it planned industrial would give you the ability to market it as here's Greenfield, we have some new planned industrial space for you. Come on and get it. And uh, I guess my question is, would would uh, complicating it slightly by allowing uh, small retail in that space hurt your ability to market it? No, I don't think so. If you'll, um, I mean, I like I say, I can certainly send it. I think I sent the presentation out to counselors a few, couple of weeks ago anyway check your email, it's probably there, it was in an update. Um, it, it, I said it was an either or, and I offered it an advantage and disadvantage slide. And yeah, obviously, uh, if you called it, I forget what I called it, uh, advanced industrial or something like that. And it did allow some retail. And in my mind, I was thinking personal services, not not, not just nail salons, <laughs> but, uh, you know, bank ATMs, gyms, yeah, certainly a salon uh, of some sort, uh, you know, any of those kinds of things. Um, you know, your, your smaller, um, I mean, even a pad site for, for retail, but you limit the size and then that kind of dictates what kind of business would be there in terms of any kind of retail. Um, but no, the, the focus would be on um, allowing more advanced manufacturing. I, I've had to, in my past lifetimes, had to tour and work in a lot of industrial parks and they're always in the Eastern part of the state and other parts of the country, often adjacent to those kinds of areas. Um, what we don't need out there is another grocery store because we have one. And you know, there's some other things that we can all argue about whether we need or not, gas stations, so forth. But um, uh, you know, a restaurant, another restaurant, uh, if if possible. Why you ask about you ask about why not do it downtown? Uh, it's just a matter of what uh, the retailer does and what their response you know, what their uh, business plan says. We don't have at the top of my mind right now, a 20,000 square foot space downtown without destroying some of downtown. Um, there may be one or two, but so they would be looking, you would be looking for retailers that were willing to do smaller areas. Um, and we've talked to some of those people before and they, they, they basically want pad sites. 
you know, Here, here's, we're here's talking my about question. TJ Maxx's or something like that, which I would love, frankly. <laughs> Um, here's my question, I guess, is, is would, uh, would some language about 20 or 30,000 square feet be a deal breaker for mm -hmm. uh, stop and shop who, who would have to agree to get out of there? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. I, I, that's, that's part of the motivation, but it's not the only motivation. So I, I, I don't think it would be a deal breaker. But, but I, you're right, my main focus is on a higher paid jobs in Greenfield, the advanced manufacturing that we have affords those jobs and they do want to expand. We do know that. So that is the main focus of the zone change. You are not incorrect in that. But I also wanna balance it with people's uh, concerns. I spent a lot of time in my lifetime uh, on that retail business out there, but large 135,000 square foot retail ventures, that ship sailed quite some, you know, a couple of three or four years ago. So but they are there for warehouses, which they can build anywhere. Jenny, did you have your hand up? I did. <laughs> um, I, I did. I had a question. Um, so I, I think that Stop and Shop really cared mostly whether or not it was a grocery store. That was, yeah. okay. Um, personally, you know, I think it's, you know, free enterprise. They didn't really want a market basket to go in there, but there might be many citizens in Greenfield that wanted that. I mean, it's sort of what the market brings, but I wanted to know if there was a reason why it, or no, I wanted to know, and the mayor might know this. I asked Eric about limiting the size of the commercial, and he said something about uniform, you know, uniformity of of form. That we don't limit the size of, generally speaking, we don't limit the size of general commercial. Or what he said was, we wouldn't be limiting the size of the buildings in this zone just the commercial buildings there was something he said about and mm, so i think I, I, your clarification on that he thought we were allowing one of them to be as big as it wanted to be in other words to an industry but the commercial we're going to tell them that they have to be small does that oh, make I sense see what you're saying i i have not had that conversation yeah. with the counselor um there there may be some merit to that discussion um mm -hmm. I mean, he knows as well as I do, when you create um, zones, you, you have the ability to do, that might've been more of a philosophical argument. Um, uh, you have the ability to state, you know, how you want that zone to present itself to a developer. Um, so, um, I, without having that conversation with him, which I haven't had, I can't, I can't comment any further than that. We, we can talk about that on the 17th. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Councilor yeah. Healy, go would ahead. Would it be as easy as just doing, would it be as easy as just having any manufacturing over 30,000 square feet special permit? I mean, it's not a big deal to get a special permit. You know, if you do the right things, it's not a big deal, right? Well, so I if it no, comes I think, down to. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, I mean, I, I just counsel. did it in Deerfield. I needed a special permit in Deerfield to build 100,000 square feet, and it, it really wasn't a big deal, you know? <laughs> I would like to say that, and this goes back to why I had my hand up in the first place, which goes back to the marijuana thing. Uh, different towns have different uh, ideas and and ways in which they write their zoning bylaws. So while, and, and uh, Councilor DeSorger knows this, we always looked at other towns and tried to figure out what is the fit for Greenfield, what's good in this town, what's good in this town. So there's nothing wrong with that. But um, apropos of the marijuana thing, they may have different ideas about what's a greenhouse and what isn't, uh, but Greenfield should, I think you mentioned this yourself, Councilor Elmer, Greenfield should decide what it means by a greenhouse for outdoor, or does it qualify as indoor grow or does it not? Um, so that's that piece, but the same kind of applies uh, with 
regard to um, how we might, if we wanted to have sort of a combination type zone, um, then um, do we do we limit commercial inside that zone and not? I, I don't know why. I think if you're gonna have a, a, a manufacturing zone um, or industrial or whatever you wanna call it, you don't wanna have it be special permit. You wanna have it be by right. Uh, because again, every town decision, I mean, look at Dollar General in Deerfield. They didn't have an easy time, even with wanting, I think it was a special permit. So I may be wrong about that, but um, it, it, you, you don't want to uh, certainly limit the main thing that you are interested in attracting to your zone. So, oh. I think you wouldn't want the manufacturing to have to get special permit unless they exceeded what was allowed, which is what we need to go out there. That zone area out there is controlled by uh, by the regular zone, which now is GC, but we want to change. It's, it's also all uh, anything that we do that's over a certain amount of square footage is zoned uh, is controlled by the uh, MDR uh, major development review and that can happen depending on what the project is and then um, you know this doesn't happen to affect the overlay because that got reduced but you know when we were doing the project for um, Ceruzzi, it was controlled by all three of those, the overlay, the MDR, and um, and what the underlying zone was. Okay, well, we'll have plenty to talk about on the 17th. So can you lower your hand now, Mayor? We... I can. Excellent, thank you. <laughs> I'm not only going to lower my hand, I'm going to say good night. <laughs> okay, goodnight. I think we will too. Is there any other new business? Appreciate your time, this, uh, giving me time this evening. Thank you. Okay, thanks for being here. Uh, okay, uh, if there's no more new or old business, uh, I'm here to announce that the next meeting will be on November 17th at 6 p.m. via Zoom conference system, conferencing system, unless otherwise posted. If you can't make it, uh, please let me know. Uh, whoever else you tell, let, let me know too. All right, uh, I, would, uh, uh, I would entertain a motion for adjournment. I'll, take, I'll make that motion, Doug Mayo. Second, disorder. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? abstained. Okay, thank you all. We made it in 49 minutes.